خلينا نقول ايه يو لا ما Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we can start with the practical stuff. Uh, in case of fire, there are two exits upstairs, you can call the signs, and there is one here to the uh, to the right. Uh, we're gonna be sending light via the room, so there's a camera in the middle, if you don't wanna be like seeing uh, the camera to just like wait being there. Um, we're gonna be taking pictures as well. Is it okay for everyone to be in picture? Otherwise, you just can't. and then we can take uh, pictures okay. of us. If you wanna, if you wanna ask questions, so please send them to menti.com and there's the code on the, on the board. Anything else? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, she's a professor in uh, peace and development research with a special interest in the Middle East, uh, Palestinian conflict and various aspects of the Palestinian situation. especially Palestinian refugees, but also identity systems. So please give a warm welcome to her. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for having me. And thank you for, for coming and spending your lunch hour uh, together uh, with me. Okay, yes. Yeah, so um, I have been like interested and followed uh, the Palestine for the last 35 years or so, but with various um, uh, focus of, of, of research and interest. And today I've been asked to talk about uh, information and media, and that's not my particular field of research and expertise, So, but I'll try to, to kind of formulate the basis for a discussion, and then you can ask me anything, but it's not certain that I can answer everything. But before I get started, I just want to say that uh, I know that there are uh, several of you, both uh, in here and probably on Zoom as well, who have personal uh, connections and per are personally affected by what is going on in Palestine and in the Gaza Strip. And I just want to say that uh, uh, there are no words any longer to express the onslaught on the Gaza Strip. Uh, but I just wanted to say that I'm aware uh, of that, and I'm aware that it affects uh, lots of people uh, in, uh, in in Sweden uh, today. So uh, let us uh, begin with uh, just a, a brief reflection of where we are uh, now when it comes to the level of destruction of the Gaza Strip and the scale of violence against the population of the Gaza Strip. The latest figures that I, I kind of collected is that we have like um, over 32,000 dead uh, Palestinians, killed Palestinians, over 70,000 injured, 13,000 children who are killed. And that actually, in four months, that number exceeds the number of children killed in all wars in the world in four years. That kind of a perspective means uh, something that is hard to comprehend. Uh, 
70,000 and more like housing units have been destroyed. Almost all infrastructure is just completely destructed. There are no universities, for example, left. It has also been a war on, on uh, healthcare, a war on hospitals, uh, and on every part of society. Someone said everything is destroyed. It's a war with uh, genocidal aspects, and we have this uh, uh, process ongoing in the International uh, Court of Justice uh, accusing uh, Israel of uh, war of, of genocide. On the Israeli side, we have uh, 1,200 uh, dead Israelis in the Hamas attack on the 7th of October, hostages taken uh, and atrocities uh, conducted by Hamas. But my focus will, uh, of course, be on, on, on Gaza. My research interest and focus has always been on like the Palestinian uh, identity, Palestinian politics, uh, Palestinian resistance, both in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, and like in the diaspora, the the whole uh, refugee uh, situation. Humanitarian organizations, uh, they don't spare their words on what is going on. We have heard, I don't know how many times since the, the uh, Israeli attack on the Gaza Strip began that the world is losing its humanity, that uh, it's a total disregard for humanity the last such um, uh, quote that uh, has been spread uh, was the one by the foreign policy chief of the European Union, Joseph Perel, who said, before the war, Gaza was the greatest open air prison. Today, it is the greatest open air graveyard. Other terms that have been used by, by both humanitarian organizations and by researchers, uh, journalists, people who have had some kind of a possibility of uh, witnessing or, or being in the Gaza Strip, call it a death zone, a death, death scape. Uh, starvation is now being used as a weapon. Uh, humanitarian aid is used as a weapon through the ways that humanitarian aid is, is blocked and hindered to enter Gaza uh, by the Israeli military forces, but also by uh, civilian uh, Israelis blocking trucks across the borders. Researchers have said that this the scale of the violence against the Gaza Strip uh, is unprecedented. We haven't seen anything like this, the level of destruction, um, maybe any time, or at least for, for decades. So just to bear this in mind, that this is um, the, the, the scale of this violence is beyond what we have known uh, before. And that is something that we need all, all uh, in society to, to take in. Part of this warfare uh, is also uh, different ways of, of, of using information. The concept of information warfare is, um, uh, is commonly uh, understood as some kind of manipulation of information so that you, through that manipulation, you influence or impact on your enemy or other actors to act in a certain way. That could be done in, in, in different ways. And we all, um, we all know about this, like deep fake, disinformation campaigns, um, uh, how uh, artificial intelligence could be used, the cyber warfare, uh, etc. There are a number of aspects and a number of different concepts uh, related to this. To this, but uh, in in today's like highly media, you know, where media uh, takes such a huge role, and information systems, information technologies play such a huge role, information becomes a very um, crucial a part, an aspect of warfare of all wars. Uh, but it has been uh, very much uh, discussed in relation to to uh, to Gaza uh, and Palestine uh, today. Another uh, term that could be used is like narrative war or war of narratives. It has a slightly different uh, connotation and slightly different uh, associations. It has to do, do with how wars are told, narrated and uh, communicated, both internally in a society and externally in order to legitimize uh, acts in the war 
or to gain uh, a better understanding in, for example, the international community for one's own uh, perceptions of the war. It has to do with controlling what is being said and shown and communicated. But it also has to do with making sense to comprehend and understand and to also show one's uh, story. And in uh, the information warfare, or whatever we would like to call it, there is the same kind of uh, asymmetrical relationships of domination and being dominated as in the war uh, itself. This is not, you know, you know that everyone, it, it's not like it's, um, it's something new in itself, uh, because the control of uh, communication, information, uh, has always been important in, in war for, for, for ages, since ancient times. Uh, there is this uh, uh, saying that in war, truth is the first casualty. We also know from uh, the uh, Nazi Germany how propaganda Mr. Joseph Goebbels used the propaganda machinery in order to, to influence war. We know from Russia and Ukraine how important it is with, with information warfare and how Russia uses uh, different kinds of, of uh, information technologies in order to, to disrupt and to uh, like also uh, hack different uh, uh, you know uh, systems uh, throughout uh, throughout Europe, for example, and this includes like everything from how you present the numbers of casualties, how many are killed, how many are injured, what sources to trust, etc., uh, to uh, manipulating sources of information or actually attacking them. We've had that in the Gaza. Uh, in the war on Gaza, also how the information, uh, uh, how the communication um, network is completely um, uh, destroyed or disrupted uh, at certain points, making it impossible for Gazans during those times to reach out and to reach perhaps um, their families, perhaps in Sweden uh, or elsewhere, to tell that they are safe. Uh, not possible during that, those uh, circumstances. Uh, and today, with the artificial and intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence and ICT, it's um, this has all exploded and intensified. So it's not something new, but the scale of this and the intensity and the consequences that is something uh, new and 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 other. And uh, in this uh, system, we also have like the social, so how, how social media is used by both official and non-official sources, and it is does it. A, a tool in influencing both internal and external uh, politics. Uh, it also has to do with what is like seen. Uh, it's, it's not. It's not only you know media uh, or 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 or, uh, or uh, uh, narratives as text, but also narratives as as visuals or images, uh, or as, as seeing. This is not new either. Uh, already. Uh, 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 a researcher called uh, Paul Verilio said that war like he had the concept of war as cinema, how, how wars are produced on our different uh, screens and how, what, what we see. What do we see and what do we not see? What are we allowed to see and what are we not allowed uh, uh, to see um, in different wars? Uh, and thus through, through this like a kind of uh, intensification and how uh, social media is uh, weaponized and that, that means that the internet and what is like seen and shown and communicated through the internet, that is changing uh, war and politics, just like war and politics are changing uh, the internet and, 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 and social media. So war, words, tech and politics are blurred into a new kind of, of uh, battlefield. In uh, the war on gas and also like in, in in, 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 if we take this as a larger, you know, the larger uh, 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 picture, because as, um, yeah, in the media, uh, it's like it all started on the 7th of October, but uh, we know that it did not. So this with how information uh, is used is also something longer. It has a much longer continuity. Uh, and uh, in Israel, they have a concept which is called uh, haspara, and that means to explain. Uh, and that is 
a concept that is linked to it called like public diplomacy, and it has to do with different kinds of advocacy, uh, uh, spreading of uh, communication, information, propaganda, uh, in order to, through that, uh, influence uh, the international uh, community. So it, it, it's it's many times used through like diplomatic sources, but also through very offensive information campaigns, both in regular traditional media, but also on social uh, uh, media. And this is this is not something which is like something that you can understand as um, like um, a part or a side from from the wider context of what Palestine is all uh, about. And in my understanding, it is part of a settler colonial uh, structure, and which in turn uh, is, is, um, is a project through which to uh, eliminate uh, the native population or and the native characteristics of the land and replacing it with uh, something else. This is uh, debated, this concept of settler colonialism, uh, but to me it, it, it makes a better, um, it provides a better tool for understanding what Palestine is about than the usual framework which is used in, in, in Swedish politics and Swedish media as, as a conflict, because it isn't like a conflict between two actors that, that are on the same kind of, of, of level uh, of, of power. And parts of this, um, uh, it, it has to do with like targeting land and infrastructure. Uh, it, it has to do with bureaucratic measure, measures. It has to do with control. It has to do with violence and a, a segregated uh, political uh, system, uh, in particular in the West Bank, but also between Israel and the Gaza Strip. So one aspect of this coming back to, to um, to uh, um, the media uh, aspects and the information war. Uh, just just you know, one example, uh, we, we all, I guess you, you, you followed all the news with the, the accusation of uh, Israel of, uh, against the UNRWA staff. And, and this is uh, then from uh, the, an account by the uh, Israeli uh, military uh, uh, forces and they they uh, provide a lot of such like information. This is one small example you can imagine after the seventh of October how much of such like uh, uh, stories and pictures uh, that have been uh, produced. So it says, would you let the terrorists educate your uh, children? Although uh, there has been no evidence against those people produced that is 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 uh, uh, credit uh, worthy, but the mere fact of using uh, social media in this way and this kind this kind of um, of formulations and messages obviously have has an impact an impact on the international audience on like us outside uh, of Palestine who listen and watch, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, so uh, this, the Israeli government in this like Kaspara uh, uh, logic, they have many such highly active uh, advocacy campaigns, posting lots of ads and, and like this, like this kind of, 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 of messages on, on uh, social media. There are also, I mean, this is the official uh, IDF account, but then we also have come back to that in a little while. Uh, the individual uh, um, images uh, that are spread by individual uh, soldiers who are present in, in Gaza and who spread like images of, of um, um, vandalizing uh, shops, uh, homes, uh, mocking uh, the Palestinians who have fled, etc., cetera, uh, etc. Cetera. Uh, and there are also there is also a um, a, um, um, a systematic kind of um, uh, censorship uh, by many of the large tech companies. For example, Meta. Meta was uh, accused of of um, um, moderating Palestinian content in two thousand and twenty one, I think, and there was like an investigation. 
and Meta then, or Facebook, it wasn't Meta yet, it was Facebook then, uh, uh, admitted uh, to having uh, um, violated Palestinian uh, rights through that kind of uh, content moderation. But nevertheless, we show now, we, 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 we see now, and that has been reported by both Human Rights Watch and a Palestinian uh, organization called Hamle, who, um, who reports on the violation against Palestinian digital rights in different uh, ways, that there is a, like a, a, a massive and systematic censorship of uh, uh, pro-Palestinian uh, uh, support. The last uh, example uh, of this is how, how um, uh, the Palestinian photojournalist, uh, Mutasa Saisa, uh, reported that, uh, it was a couple of days ago only, that his uh, Facebook account had been uh, 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 erased. I guess many of you have seen him. He reported from, from inside Gaza for Al Jazeera, uh, but uh, left uh, a month ago or so, I think. And maybe uh, many of you have also experienced this kind of lately. So this was a, a post I posted on, on, on Facebook. It was like from the, from the Swedish uh, television news. So one would think it, it, it wouldn't be so sensitive, if you like. And it had to do with Swedish doctors reporting on the situation in Gaza Strip. But then it was like, yeah, we have removed it, uh, your post to. Uh, further down the the, the flow, um, in in this um, process, there is also a dehumanization of uh, of Palestinians, which is um, communicated through both social media and regular media, press conferences, uh, etc. And those are some of, of of those are some examples of that that were. Uh, published or, or spoken, uttered, uh, communicated early on in this uh, war, how uh, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, said that this is a struggle between the children of life and the children of darkness, between humanity and the law of the jungle. Uh, he also has made references to the biblical story of Amalek and the Amalekites, uh, who were in the in ancient history uh, arc enemies of, of the Israelites. Uh, and how they uh, should be uh, destroyed and annihilated. The Minister of Defense, he said those are human animals. Uh, the President, uh, this is like a project through which to save the Western civilization against an empire of violence. Another Minister of Culture and Heritage said nuke Gaza, and the Minister of National Security uh, that uh, fuel shouldn't be allowed into the gas strip because if not, then uh, the the pumps running the water system couldn't uh, uh, couldn't function, and then everyone should be inflicted by uh, itching uh, lies. Those kind of dehumanizing uh, narratives and discourses and and stories, which um, if you make some kind of a theoretical um, analysis or claim of of that, it's like. It's like uh, reading uh, uh, a textbook case of Edward Said's uh, Orientalism, how uh, Israelis are, are presented as uh, belonging to the West, uh, uh, modernity, lightness, civilization, etc. and the Palestinians, uh, the, the other side or the contrary. So it's like a colonial lo logic of, of uh, producing uh, categories of us and them, of uh, friends and, and enemy, uh, of light and darkness and friend um, and foe. This is also uh, going through uh, like hate campaigns that are uh, driven on social media. So, I mean, those are uh, official narratives. Uh, you could say that, oh, okay, maybe they didn't mean, but those are uh, the highest representatives of, of, of Israel and the Israeli uh, government. Then we have also those like more the unofficial accounts and the hate campaigns that are driven uh, to a large extent by the settler community, but not only the, the different right wing parties in Israel. Uh, that uh, <laughs> many reels, like uh, um, you can see reels of settlers dancing and chanting. So Gaza, Gaza is a graveyard, and there will be no schools in the future because there will be no children. 
there was a talk show which was called uh, which is called a wonderful country and there were comedians on this tv co uh, uh, talk show they were mocking uh, the killing of palestinian ch uh, children and called this pallywood like hollywood or bollywood that it was like fake uh, or 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 produced the state owned tv channel calm uh, had uh, showed a video of children uh, singing about the elimination of of, of uh, uh, gas and we have those images and videos of, of individual soldiers uh, who um, humiliate uh, 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 people uh, who mock the people who have left the homes that they invade uh, we have also the children that we can see of Palestinian men uh, captured by the Israeli forces and like parading uh, in their underwear, uh, blind, folded, hands uh, uh, cuffed in very humiliating uh, scenes. Um, so to the audience outside of Gaza, there is like, if you follow, if you follow social media, uh, if, uh, like Instagram or, or so forth, this becomes like a doom scroll. Uh, I, 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 I don't know how many uh, childrens without children without limbs or children just shaking, shocked, all gray, covered with dust that I have seen during this like uh, period. But to, to, to most uh, who doesn't have the, the context or doesn't even don't even see those pictures because you don't see them if you don't follow uh, Instagram or Al Jazeera or international uh, media. Uh, it, it becomes like uh, uh, not fully possible to to understand the full scope of the devastation or what is going on on. That also has to do with the restrictions on journalism. No international journalists are, are allowed into uh, the Gaza Strip. There have been a few, but those have then been embedded with the Israeli uh, forces who have uh, been then allowed into the Gaza uh, uh, Strip. Also, 95 journalists uh, have so far uh, been killed by Israeli forces. And that also exceeds the number of journalists killed in any war that we have uh, counted. S and we have those like, uh, um, I, I'm sure you have also, but I, it's not only Motasa Saisa, there are also others, both men and women, uh, like individual persons who are both like, like, like uh, him. His, he, he, he was uh, covering the war for Al Jazeera, but also using his like individual accounts to, 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 um, um, to present and to show, to tell and to show. And uh, he said in an uh, in an interview quite recently with the with the New York Times uh, or maybe the New York I don't remember, but anyhow his idea was that with my phone I can show you everything, and that's what's like in, that's what's different in current wars from previous wars, right? That we have individual uh, citizens, ordinary men and women. Uh, young people who come through that simple uh, uh, device, which is in everyone's hands on and on everyone's devices to be shown. So his idea, with my phone, I can show you everything. His idea was never to be a war journalist. He wanted to show uh, the beauty of Gaza, and he wanted to be like a travel um, photographer. But he became a war uh, photographer. Uh, but then uh, afterwards, he realized it was all useless. It was all worthless. It didn't change anything. And he also reminded us that what is happening in Gaza isn't content for you, because that's sometimes how we consume it, like, like, like content uh, that we can see and watch, uh, but don't have to act upon. Uh, when we come to 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 Sweden, I'll I'll, I'll end I'll wrap up uh, pretty rapidly. Uh, that there there hasn't been like you know any studies any like you know that I've seen and seen yet. I think there will there will come there will be a lot of of of, of uh, uh, research uh, on this because the discussion on how the Swedish media works has been so uh, intense. 
Uh, but this study, it's not like official or published research, uh, but it's been spread around. So maybe you've seen you've seen it uh, also. It uh, nevertheless, it, it it shows that when you if you count, you know, if you you make uh, analysis of how many times certain things are mentioned, then uh, Israelis that the, the Israelis killed uh, are mentioned more often than Palestinians. The language used when uh, violence uh, has been directed against Israel, uh, it, it's, it's, it's more like uh, emotional, more, uh, more direct in a sense. Uh, uh, words like bloody, brutal, slaughter or ma mass murder uh, are used. But when it comes to uh, uh, the kind of violence that uh, Palestinians are exposed to, it's more like it's, it's like the it's like it was like the unfortunate uh, outcome or result of attacks, raid uh, operations, and very seldom is like the actor mentioned. So it's like something which is more pa passive. Uh, so so it's not, yeah, something. It, that's how it's uh, uh, described, like like uh, uh, passive um, acts of violence, and um, it's often in terms of like like. Uh, now there is this like focus on the humanitarian situation uh, in the Gaza Strip, as if the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip is not something which is orchestrated uh, or, or 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 made. It's not like a, it's it, it's not like suffering uh, as the result of an earthquake or a tsunami or, or something. But it's it's but but that when when it's spoken about humanitarian suffering without mentioning the uh, the actions behind that it becomes like more of a, a, a passive uh, description uh yeah and this is basically uh, the same uh, another thing that i would like to mention is that um when uh, uh, and and that's this has also been discussed a lot when uh, when we watch uh, swedish news on the uh, tv and when they when they tell the numbers of Palestinians killed, they always say, "Enligt uh, the Hamas sida According to the Hamas-run health ministry of the Gaza but they never say when they, when they, uh, when they present figures that are are uh, spread by by the Israeli Defense Forces, they never say, like, according to the Israeli Defense Forces run by the right wing extremists. <laughs> that, that, that's never the reverse, right? It's like, that, that's never questioned. So that creates an imbalance uh, from the beginning. And when I am interviewed by, by media, it never happened before, but now it, 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 it always happens, especially when it's... it's uh, when it's uh, radio, television, they say, so how do you talk about standing? Did you take a stance? And they ask, so, okay, what do you mean by, by, by that? What is, what is that? And then they kind of uh, get a little bit uh, uh, anxious and, and sometimes they end up by saying, okay, but are you politically active in a part? No, I'm not. Okay, but, but it's, it's, all, it's also the case that many of the interviews that I make, they're never uh, published anymore. So they, they have decided I have taken uh, a stand. At least that's my kind of interpretation uh, of that. So lastly, um, what all of this kind of ends up with is that uh, those media representations, whether they are spread by um, uh, official uh, or traditional media, whether there's the sources are like uh, um, official and and um, um, like state state um, sponsored uh, by like the Israeli state, or 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 so they uh, they point towards uh, uh, Judith Butler, I think, and whose lives that are grievable. Uh, how how the killings and the violence is described says something about whose lives we consider grievable. Um, Judith Butler said that ungrievable lives are those that we have not considered worthy of life uh, before. And if not grievable, if we cannot grieve, uh, then we deprive those who are not grievable of their humanity, 
of their rights and their uh, equality. And that I think is the um, shameful result uh, of the information war. Okay, I am there and then we'll have time for, for uh, questions. And there is a chat, but maybe they are, don't know. They didn't hear so well. Oh, no, they're from Gamma. They're from Tidal. Sorry about the next slide, too. Yes, but under time, um, here is the code for Menti. Can us uh, still ask a um, uh, question? You can ask anything, but I cannot answer it. <laughs> um, I mean, we are all like media consumers in one way or another. So I guess every most have thoughts on, on, on this somehow. Yes, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. It's oh, sorry. We can go through them. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not big. No, it's. Do I? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, through time, all of this, uh, through, uh, since it started, you mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, that's a good point. Uh, and, um, and like lastly, there's been um, kind of, um, yeah, more focus on the Gaza Strip and also on the famine and on the starvation. Uh, and uh, perhaps that means uh, uh, a change. But on the other hand, I also think that there is uh, this um, uh, tendency to uh, um, to to see them uh, Gazans and Palestinians more like a crown, a mass, than something which is like worthy of individual uh, contribution uh, and country. But I think there there is much more analysis needed to be made uh, in terms of how uh, the media discourse has. Um, um, like, yeah, what, what are the main uh, portrayals and perceptions and how that takes? And I think we will see that uh, through time. But uh, I, I, I also 
uh, uh, I'd like to establish to, to, to speak to that point that I, I the, in, in general, like that the uh, Palestinians lives are not portrayed as uh, equally good. No. Uh, I mean, we see, we see, we, we start to now see more of like internal Israeli protests against the government. Those protests have been uh, kind of quiet during the war. The, the protests that have occurred have been related to uh, how the Israeli government is dealing with the hostage issue. But before the war, we saw this, those huge uh, protests by uh, the like Israeli liberal um, uh, society, journalists, uh, the legal people, academics, uh, students, uh, yeah, uh, against the, uh, the the Israeli government, and so. So I think there are beginning to occur more of like, I think what you said, cracks. That's a good uh, uh, concept, both internally and externally, because in the beginning of the war, it was like the international community gave Israel a carte blanche to just sticking to that um, a perspective of Israel's right to self-defense. In relation to your question, maybe it's the case that the images now coming up from Gaza are becoming so shocking to the international community that we see also those kind of cracks and a bit more of a pressure from the US administration and from uh, the EU. So in terms of the Hasbara and the communication, uh, I think the government is, uh, is, 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 is a bit pressed uh, by both from internal uh, and external sources. But I think it will be, I think the, uh, the probably the, 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 the main preoccupation is to, um, uh, to, to, to stick to, one thing is the UNRWA story, just to stick to that and to stick to the, um, uh, to, to the explanation that it all has to do with uh, Hamas uh, using tunnels and civilian infrastructure, uh, making this kind of war useless. Isaac. It's not a question, please, but uh, can you please be a bit closer to the yeah. so people can hear you in so uh, do you think Swedish media on the whole supported uh, Israel by spreading its propaganda? Um, if yes, what is the reason uh, behind that? Like, uh, maybe I'm not the one to say that it is spreading Israeli propaganda. I think uh, I would uh, kind of um, stick to saying that I think it has been biased uh, in favor of a more pro-Israeli uh, 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 discourse a bit hiding the Palestinian uh, side of the uh, story. The reasons behind that, <clears throat> I think that also will uh, need uh, studies and more uh, analysis. Uh, but one, um, one, one aspect of that is that uh, the, the Pal Palestine and Israel is something which is kind of polarized in, the Swedish, in Swedish politics. And now we have a, a, a Swedish government uh, which is predominantly uh, pro-Israeli, whereas the whereas uh, the opposition is predominantly pro-Palestinian. If you make it very uh, uh, simplified, I think that has something to do with it. But I also think it has to uh, 
has to do with the uh, the, the fear of being accused of anti-Semitism. I think that's uh, uh, something which runs very deep uh, in the way that uh, communication and, and representations are spread and used, uh, etc. Om jag trycker ner här, är det då kommer det fler då, eller? Ja. Ah. It was more like a comment, I think. Um, why do you think the censorship is so widespread across even the public media platforms in, in uh, Sweden? I don't know if, if, if it's right to call it censorship. Um, it depends a little bit on what one means by censorship. Uh, but but again, I think there is a, I think there is a fear of being like accused of of uh, anti-Semitism. I mean, lots of of discussions have 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 been uh, like that, haven't they? Even uh, the, the even all of the discussions on the on the on the uh, from the river to the sea, like how <laughs> the, 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 that, those kind of, of of discussions and and debates show this uh, huge fear of being like accused of of of, of, of being uh, anti-Israel. But I also actually think it has to do with a, a very proactive uh, Israeli foreign policy and Israeli. Um, um, yeah, diplomacy, uh, telling, using its uh, its uh, its um, resources to tell uh, its story, uh, and and using that in different kinds of of uh, diplomatic uh, contexts uh, uh, and uh, uh, media, etc. Yeah, uh, this is a, a good question. Uh, also, uh, and, and that's been a concern for, uh, I think, both the university staff many times, but 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 uh, but uh, probably more to to uh, students. And uh, I think the answer to that is is more or less the same as the last one that there is a fear of being uh, accused of uh, anti-Semitism, and also that this. Um, 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 the kind of reflections uh, after the uh, Hamas attack on the 7th of, of, of October and the brutality of that attack meant that like there was all, there was already a taking side by uh, the official uh, discourse in that uh, in uh, uni and, and uh, officially uh, the universities in Sweden uh, uh, their um, their explanation is that um, okay. So when it came to the uh, uh, to the Russian invasion of, of Ukraine, there was like an official um, uh, um, stance or stand taken by the Swedish government, saying that uh, Sweden should no longer cooperate with the, uh, with any Russian uh, state uh, institutions. So that meant that uh, the Swedish universities also cancelled uh, their uh, their relations with official uh, state in institutions and, and uh, Russian uh, universities. But nothing such has taken place when it comes to uh, to Israel and, 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 and uh, uh, Palestine. So that's that's why what, what is um, many times used. So it, I think it, it backs down to to the uh, uh, official politics uh, to some extent at least. Uh, that was the same question as before. Uh, don't you think the coverage of the Gaza massacres have made the Palestinians more grievable in the West? Yes, uh, 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 perhaps if we compare it to the to the situation like right uh, in the immediate uh, uh, aftermath of of seventh uh, of October, but I still would uh, stick to my uh, my previous analysis that there is a huge difference uh, here uh, in how how violence against Israel is and violence against, violence against Palestinians uh, is uh, told and shown. And I think that makes the impression that in Swedish media discourse, Palestinian lives are not as grievable. And I think it also has to do with, uh, I 
I think it has to do with like those kind of orientalist uh, uh, stereotypes and, 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 and tropes. I think the uh, uh, Hasbara logic, I don't know when you can say that it started, uh, but but uh, it, I think it has also always been uh, um, been Im important for Israel to also because of, of uh, Israeli uh, uh, sentiments and perceptions of vulnerability uh, after uh, the Second World War, after the uh, Holocaust and uh, the sentiments are being um, haunted uh, in the in the world. I think this has been important. Uh, when uh, the concept of Hasbara, uh, like when, when that uh, started to be used, I don't really know. Um, has mainstream media especially always been supporting it? That's, it's, it's interesting, uh, this, because um, if, if we, I, I think the media representations are to at least some extent connected to, to um, offic the, the official and governmental politics. And uh, we have had um, uh, variations and fluctuations on how uh, the Swedish government views uh, Israel and Palestine. Also the Social Democrats have, like, their, mm, their support has been a little bit uh, gone back and forth, if, if, you, if you simplify. Uh, yeah. uh, that, but I think that there has been periods of time when the Palestinian media has been uh, more less biased than I think it is today. Yeah, how can we combat this? Uh, yeah, continue to. I, I think that was what what what, what like the, the what I showed uh, what Motas Aisa, Aisa said. Uh, and I think that's uh, what what many Palestinians uh, do uh, in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. To their, through individual accounts, through through uh, groups uh, accounts, to uh, to uh, recapture uh, the story and the narrative, and uh, to um, spread to the world like uh, what is um, happening. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but there, there was one slide I had with the. Uh, 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 it looked like a camera, but it's actually it's actually an artificially an automated weapon system uh, outside the um, the checkpoint in in Hebron. And in Hebron, there is also this uh, a project by uh, resistance organizations, uh, which you could call Flip the Camera. So they use the their mobile cameras to uh, to cover like human rights abuse, etc. Uh, I think this is one way to to um, uh, to uh, uh, how how Palestinians uh, uh, try to recapture uh, uh, the story, but I think like um, what to do uh, events and and uh, and uh, 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 telling uh, another story. Uh, Bear with me. How did you said how did young? Yes, the social media movement. So, like, you're in your small bubble, and it's hard to reach um, people that are not close to you in the community. Um, so, what do you think that as young people can learn from the older generations in how to reach people in real life? I have no idea. <laughs> But it's a good. It's also an interesting question. Uh, but I like. Um, I think different kinds of events, which kind of require some kind of physical presence, um, maybe um, like yeah, events, activities where um, um, I, I I know that you show films, for example, uh, such activities and and. Uh, events uh, which also which also perhaps comes a little bit you know uh, away from just the immediate situation I mean the immediate situation right now is so horrendous so it requires it requires all thinking people to to focus on, on that on the other hand we also need to understand there is a historical logic behind all of this and it's not like it just 
patent or blew up or something. So, so to present that wider context, I think is is important also. Uh, what interested me to research about Palestine, about Palestine? Yeah, it was like a, a long time ago. I was a, a, I was a peace activist, and there was it was nineteen eighty nine uh, uh, New Year's, and there was this huge um, uh, manifestation uh, in Jerusalem, organized by Palestinian organizations, Israeli organizations, and European uh, peace organizations. the 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 slogan was uh, two two people, two states. Uh, and um, I was there as a representative uh, of a peace organization, and I was also in the beginning of my PhD studies. Uh, so I had never been there before, but we we made those demonstrations, um, uh, women marching outside the um, like on the outside the all the, the wall of the old city. We had like uh, we held hands outside um, the, the the old uh, old city, and there was lots of um, uh, Israeli police and, and and military and tear gas and 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 you know and and I was also traveling around in the West Bank meeting uh, journalists and being in refugee camps and so forth. And and as I was also like in my early career as a PhD student, I I it kind of. Uh, hit me. I I think I think it it, it does. You, you when you're young and if you in such a context, it, it hits you and you can't kind of leave it. So yeah, we are. Uh, there are a few more. Uh, Swedish public opinion of Palestine five to ten years ago in relation to now. I think it's uh, when you look at the different opinion polls, uh, the Swedish in general is more are, are more pro uh, Israeli. Uh, if you simplify, but there is a, uh, there is a generation uh, uh, shift, and I think that's uh, that's true for most of the Western world. Uh, it seems like European countries and the US that there is like a, 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 a gap between an older generation and a younger generation, and that's also interesting. What is that about? Is it only about social media? It's partly about social media, but I also think. Uh, it has to do with uh, uh, the way uh, that there is like a global solidarity movement connecting different struggles uh, to each other. I think that also has an impact uh, on on uh, young uh, people. But if we look at uh, at the governmental politics, it's like it's it's very uh, the 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 shift between um, like uh, the government now and the previous government is 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 quite um, uh, stark. Yeah, you could say. If this, if uh, public media has uh, contributed to the spreading of fear, I I don't know. I can't really answer that. It's uh, I think it's 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 uh, it's a good question, but it's it's uh, tricky, and you would need to make some kind of deeper analysis of how this like how I mean th because this has to do with the effects of 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 what we see, the kind of representations, uh, uh, etc. Um, um, yeah, but as I said before, I think it has. It, I think it has uh, a, a relevance. A fear of this, uh, um, fear of being accused of anti-Semitism. Um, well, uh, um, the I don't know about the U.S. blocking uh, aid packages, but all of this with the uh, with aid to the Gaza Strip is really uh, is really. Uh, uh, disturbing, and we know that uh, Israel, the Israeli side, is controlling each truck uh, meticulously, and not letting in uh, material that they could see that they think could be a security risk. For example, there was like a load with uh, scissors uh, to cut um, bandages uh, for for medical health. But that was not uh, allowed. So this kind of, you know, this this kind of 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 blocking uh, uh, occurs um, uh, a lot. But and 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 not speaking of the U.S. here, but the Israeli blockade of that aid. I see that as some kind of a, a weapon used uh, in in the war uh, in order to. Um, to reach uh, Israeli military uh, targets and goals, uh, and in order to um, to create this chaos that is existing. 
guess it. I, I, that's uh, uh, intentional uh, to me. It's uh, pretty clear that there is an intention uh, behind that. And we should also remember that the blockade against the gas and strip is nothing new either. It's been a blockade against the gas and strip since 2007. And now it's complete uh, and hermetic. That's the difference. But the basic, uh, but the basic um, uh, logic behind that is not new. The, in 2000, I think it was in 2012, the war against Gaza in 2012. Uh, I might be wrong on the on the year, but then there was um, um, the Israeli government made a calculation of how much calories you would need as a male or a female in order to on a daily basis. So they allowed uh, what, I mean, food deliveries that would cover that, but no more. And that's not like fake or pro propaganda. It's, it's, it's true. There are many sources uh, behind that. So this kind, those kinds of actions of hindering uh, basic supplies to the, is, is, isn't new in itself. It's part of a longer strategy. And also in 2007, yeah, after the Hamas takeover of the Gaza Strip, Israel declared that all of Gaza is enemy territory. Not only Hamas, all of Gaza is enemy. One more, then we end. Um, oh, yeah, this was a hard one. I think I will duck on that one whether it's rooted in anti-refugee sentiments uh, and white nationalist desire to protect. Uh, I, 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 I don't think I can uh, respond to that. But I do think it has to do with um, anti-Muslim uh, discourses and, um, and representations, which we have seen a race in, uh, in the West as such. Uh, in particular since uh, September 11, which also has meant lots of uh, restrictions, uh, lots, not like, it's not like only racist discourses, but it has also been implemented in, 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 in politics. Okay, we're over one, but thanks a lot. So thank you to everyone on Zoom uh, for being uh, uh, and and sorry if the if the sound wasn't okay all the time. We want to thank you. We, oh, we make oh. a mug. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> 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 thank you all for coming. <laughs>